Hi everyone and welcome back to my art channel where you can learn or get inspired to let your creativity flourish. This week I'm showing you my entire process for how I like to make my own handmade platinum silicone moulds and these moulds can be used for resin, jasmineite, cement, plaster, concrete, candles or soap. But before I can pour any silicone, the first step is to create a casing for my master. So depending on the actual shape of my master, I'm going to show you a few different methods that I use to create the casings. For my first example of casings, to create square or rectangular casings, I use Lego bricks. Now I have them everywhere in my house, but if you don't, just skip to the chapter where I also use old cardboard packaging to create square or rectangular molds. So I like to create four separate sides with the Lego that fit around my master and then I'm just going to clip the top of them with some more Legos. This will make it easier to unmold. And the first step, which is also the first steps for all of the methods I'm going to show you, and this is the most important, is to lay down some double-sided sticky tape to embed your master into. If you do this, you will hardly have any cleanup on the top side once you demold. Then press the Legos firmly into the tape followed by your masters. And the final step is to seal the outside of the moulds with hot glue to ensure that no silicone leaks out. And then to save on dead space I'm just going to add some smaller castings that I have hanging around and I'm going to put them into the gaps. But do make sure that there is a space in between each object and you can be frugal with the space around the edges and around each master, but do leave at least a finger width depth along each side, and this will create a nice sturdy mold that will last. And method number two is for irregular shaped masters such as this coaster and for this I like to use plasticine but you can also use play-doh, fimo or clay as a barrier. And once again I'm applying some double sided sticky tape to embed my master into and since this is already sticky and I've pushed it down into the sticky tape I won't need any hot glue to seal the sides for this particular method.
For method number three, I'm using old cardboard packaging to cut out four rectangles to create a box around my master. And all four sides are the same height and width. For round or oval masters, I bought three of these magnetic rulers from Amazon, and they're not expensive, and they hold their shape thanks to the magnets. Again, leave enough room on the edges for a sturdy mould. Now, to measure the amount of silicone needed, I saw this on Let's Resin's Instagram page. It's a clever little trick. Um, before you add the double-sided sticky tape, just fill up the master and the casing with sand and weigh this out. This is the weight that you will need. So I like to round it up a bit and this trick does work.
So I like using transparent platinum silicone and this one is by Let's Resin and it's sold on Amazon. And I'll leave you my affiliate links in the description so you can buy from Amazon US, Amazon UK and Amazon France. So this particular platinum silicone is a medium density silicone once it's cured. So it's quite bendable and this is useful if you have large or complicated castings. So unlike some brands of resin, this silicone mix needs to be weighed out using an electric scale. It's a one to one ratio, so it's easy to measure out equal parts A to B. And the working time is around 40 minutes, but beware, if it's a hot day outside, this will lessen the working time as the heat will accelerate the curing. And it takes around six hours to cure. So for example, I did this in the morning and then I molded around five in the afternoon and they were ready. I always use platinum silicone. It's better quality than cheaper silicones, especially for resin. This makes it better for torching since it can tolerate higher temperatures. And personally, I've never had any problems with my molds overheating. I mix this for around three minutes and the best way to pour is to do it from a height. Uh, this will help the air bubbles escape as it flows in the air. But if you do find there are any big bubbles on the surface, you can just use a straw to blow them out, but do not use heat. This will just create a really horrid crust on the surface. And I've also tried spraying the surface with um, isopropyl alcohol, but personally, I didn't find it did any better than just using a straw. And all you need to do is tap the mold lightly to allow any air bubbles to escape and then just leave it on a level surface for six hours. And it's really important that you level your workspace or your table that you're working on. If it's not level, your molds will be slanted and that will affect all your future castings.
When it comes to unmolding, just make sure your silicone is fully cured by touching the top of it. And if it's hard and not sticky, it's good to go. And then just carefully re remove all of the casing and then peel the silicone off the master. Et voila! So I'll be using all of these molds that I've made here in this video to cast various materials and you can find all of those over on my Instagram page. I'll leave the link in the description under this video for you and all the links to the materials that I've used. So thanks for watching everyone and do leave me a comment. I try my best to reply to all of them. Um, I certainly do read all of them. And if you like this video, leave me a little thumbs up and this will really help my channel which will allow me to create more free content for you. Have a great week everyone and we'll catch up soon. Bye!